Hey guys, welcome back to Guys That Magic. It's me, it's Steven, and today I'm joined by Hunter. Hunter, say hello. Hello, everybody. Well, super excited to be going over this pre-con upgrade with you. This is the Animated Army deck. This is our $300 upgrade to the main commander, Bello. Hunter, why don't you tell me a little bit about Bello for the people at home that might be tuning in for the first time? Yeah, so Bello, Bard of the Brambles, won a red and a green for a 3-3 legendary creature, Raccoon Bard. It says, during your turn, each non-equipment artifact and non-aura enchantment you control with mana value 4 or greater is a 4-4 elemental creature in addition to its other types and has indestructible haste and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So that is right. The name of the game is to cast our big artifacts and enchantments, make them 4-4s with indestructible, swing in for a bunch of damage and win the game. Hunter, I love Bellow. I kind of have seen a few of the things it can do, and it is aggressive, especially in that gruel style format. All right. Well, with that being said, Hunter, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the additions. But right before we move on, a word from our sponsor. Hey, what's up, nerds? Today's video is sponsored by our good friends over at Evoke the Art, bespoke token series. If you're looking for another way to upgrade your decks, Evoke the Art's got you covered. Their complete set comes with 50 tokens, 45 of which are double sided offering a diverse range of artwork and utility. Head on over to zaximusstudios.etsy.com to pick up yours today. You can find the link in the description. Once again, huge thanks to Evoke the Art. Now let's get back to the video. Hey guys, welcome back from that word from our sponsor. I know we're getting into those additions. Hunter, did you change anything from the $100 upgrade? Yeah, so this is a direct continuation from the $100 upgrade. Upgrade. So everything that you see on the screen right now is being brought right back over from the $100 upgrade. This is added to these new cards to make the total $300. So if you haven't already seen that video, check the link in the description down below to watch that before you watch this, because like I said, it's a continuation. All right, fantastic. Well, let's jump straight into some creatures that I'm terrified to look at. Yeah, so first up, it's one of my favorites, and this is just going up in price right now. So this used to be in a $100 upgrade video. It's made it to the 300. It's roaming throne. It's four mana for a four, four artifact creature golem. It's got ward two. It says as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Roaming throne is the chosen creature type in addition to its other types. And it says if a triggered ability of the chosen creature you control would trigger, it triggers an additional time. So basically what we're saying when roaming throne comes down, we're going to name elemental. That's right, because Bello makes all of our high mana value artifacts and enchantments elementals. So if there is any trigger coming from those, Roaming Throne makes those double. Also, fun fact, because Roaming Throne is an artifact creature, Bello actually triggers him. It doesn't change the power toughness at all, but it does make it indestructible and be able to give us some card draw. So it's fantastic. It turns itself into an elemental too, so it's really cool. The next card that I thought was an awesome include is Cybermen Squadron. It is seven mana for a 5-5 artifact creature Cybermen. It says non-legendary artifact creatures you control have myriad. So if we have a nice, cool, legendary artifact, like Roaming Throne, for instance, is not legendary, so it would trigger the Cybermen. Swing in, makes a bunch of copies hitting our opponents as well. And we got some really spicy artifacts in this deck that... If we can get multiple on the field swinging in, oh, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, plus just to have that extra damage being pointed at your other two opponents is pretty strong here. It definitely is. And, of course, we added the other win con into the deck, I guess if you would say. It's Critter of Behemoth. Five and three green for a 5-5 five, five creature beast. It's got haste, and it says when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. If it's late game, you're throwing this and you're winning because we're probably going to have a lot of the artifacts and enchantments on the field. They're hard to deal with. Um, just give all those 4-4 four, four plus X plus X however many you have and swing in and win. Swing in and win. I love it. You hate to see it sometimes, but you gotta love it. Mm -hmm. But those do look like all the creatures. I do see some fun instant cards. Yes, Steven, I did throw in some instant cards here. Um, Two cards that kind of just protect us from dying, right? So 
as soon as we turn on all of our artifacts and enchantments, they are a little bit more susceptible to exile removal. They are indestructible, but that does not do anything. So if we have a path to exile or a source of plowshares coming our way, they can just take out these high mana value artifacts or enchantments with one mana. And we don't want that. So deflecting SWAT's coming in for two and a red. Instant, if you control your commander, then you don't even need to pay the mana cost for this. It just says choose new targets for the target speller ability. So just a little protection. I mean, deflecting SWAT always a good include, especially in decks that you're pretty much guaranteed to play your commander a lot. So I really do love this addition. I'm also throwing in fog. Good old fog. One green mana for an incident that says prevent all combat damage. That would be dealt this turn. We have attacking creatures, but when it's not our turn, those artifacts and enchantments go back to just being artifacts and enchantments. They can't block at all. So fog is just a little extra way just to protect us from being attacked. If someone's like, I have the win, I can kill that player right now. We just say, no, you can't hold, hold the phone. <laughs> hold the fog. Hold the fog. No. Yeah, normally fog. you always have to, normally you always have to like, is he holding up one white mana to remove the piece that I need to kill him? No, he's holding up a green now. Now I got to worry about this. Mm -hmm. that's right worry about the fog well speaking of things to worry about i see three very spicy artifacts being added to this spicy indeed uh a chroma's memorial seven generic mana for a legendary artifact it says creatures control have flying first strike vigilance trample haste and protection from black and from red yep why not just uh get in with even more damage with a chroma's memorial with all of our stuff coming to life. Now they're just doing even more. I mean, just a fantastic include because this in itself becomes a 4-4 four, four indestructible with haste. Yep. And then it'll draw you a card if you deal damage. And then it, and then it gives itself trample. And it gives itself flying and first strike and vigilance. And <laughs> it just, it's so good. Portal to Phyrexia is also being thrown in here. It's nine mana for an artifact that says... When it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices three creatures. It also says, at the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It's a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. Think about this for a second. If we have Cyberman Squadron, this is a not a legendary artifact. Swing in with a portal to Phyrexia. Make two more portal Phyrexias. That's a lot of sacrificing. <laughs> a, yeah. Yeah. And also, it's really cool because the beginning of the upkeep, let's just go ahead and take a target creature card that just kind of protects us as well. Because once, like I said before, if our artifacts and enchantments are not creatures, we cannot block with them. So just a little bit of protection there on the back end. I mean, I love it. You really can't go wrong. Portal of Phyrexia is a very strong card. Yeah, and the final artifact we are throwing in here is Ward of Bones. I don't know if you've heard of this, but it's only been printed one time in all of Magic. It is six mana for an artifact. It says each opponent who controls more creatures than you can't play creature cards. The same is true for artifacts, enchantments, and lands. <laughs> so basically, if our opponent has a crazy board and they have more creatures than us, then we're putting a cap on that because we can do a bunch of stuff. We're going to have the most creatures because we're going to be animating all of our stuff on our turn. And then when we pass, they're no longer creatures. They can no longer play more creatures. It's pretty cool. I mean, very cool card. Also, just slows the game down a little bit to a certain extent with the artifacts, enchantments, and land stapled on there too. Oh yeah, definitely. It definitely slows the game down, except for us. It's it's beautiful. Yeah. All right. I love the creatures. I love the other instant spells. The artifacts were extremely spicy. What lands did you throw in? Yep. Wrapping this up, we have two more land additions. We have Fomori Vault. It is a land that can tap for a colorless. You can also pay three, tap it, discard a card. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is the number of artifacts you control. Put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So we are playing with quite a bit of artifacts. This will trigger pretty often if we're trying to find something that maybe we're drawing too many lands. Let's try and get something better. Yeah, plus with Portal, if you want to, you could throw something really good into the graveyard that might have been a little too expensive to cast. Exactly that. Reanimate it. A little bit of a reanimated yeah. 
and gruel here. Watch out. <laughs> and the final land we're throwing in here, just as some added bonus, is Inventor's Fair. It's a legendary land that says at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more artifacts, you gain one life. You can tap it to add a colorless mana, or you could pay four, tap it, sacrifice, Inventor's Fair, search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library, activate this ability only if you control three or more artifacts. This is really in here just to kind of just gain a little bit of life because we are going to be a threat at the board. We are going to be taking some damage. Just a little bit of a buff there for a life total. I mean, hey, one point could matter. It could definitely matter. And go and get the portal to Phyrexia if you really wanted to. I mean, yeah, being able to just tutor that straight up would have been really good. Oh, yeah. Well, are those all the additions? That is going to do it for the addition portion of this video. All right. Well, we talked about the things we're adding. Earlier in the video, we talked about the $100 additions. Those were all staying. What about the $100 cuts? Yep. Similar situation. I took a look at this deck. I went back from the 100. I looked at it again. I thought, mm, keeping them at all. So everything you see on the screen, cut from the 100, still cut here. Yep. They were cut for a reason. Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and jump into our new cuts for this beautiful $300 upgrade. I saw some fun cards that you added. Obviously, getting rid of cards sucks, but this first one that I'm seeing on the creature side, I always cut. Yeah, it's Burnished Heart. It's three mana for a 2-2 artifact elk. You can pay three, sacrifice Burnished Heart. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them on the battlefield, tap, and shuffle. It's a really slow way to ramp. Um, yeah. Well, I don't have much else to say. It's it's an uncommon for a reason. Let's just leave it at that. I will leave it right there. Grumgully the Generous is also uncommon for a reason. It is one, a red, and a green for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature, a Goblin Shaman. It says each other non-human creature you control enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. That's cool. It's a really good card in plus one plus one counter theme. In the long run of things, it's really not doing much for this deck at all like one extra counter is not gonna make this deck any scarier than it already is yeah i definitely <laughs> yeah after seeing the deck in action I, I i understand that and the final cut for the creature department hurts my heart a lot but it is galta primal hunger it's 10 and 2 green for a 12 12 legendary creature elder dinosaur that says it costs x less to cast where x is the total power of creatures you control it's got trample it hurts my heart because i am a dinosaur player and i put this kind of in my dinosaur deck multiple dinosaur decks i mean galta He's leaving the deck because we are pretty heavy with our curve now. Um, and if we draw this early game, this is doing nothing for us. So it's leaving, unfortunately, for 12 mana. Yeah, I feel like this is either in your starting hand or super late game every single time. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you did add two fun instant spells. Did you get rid of any? I got rid of one. I got rid of Starstorm. It's X2 red for an instant. It says it deals X damage to each creature. It's got a cycling cost of three. It is very mana intensive. You're going to need to pump a lot into this. And if we're playing it as an instant, that means we're not casting it on our turn, which means we're leaving up a ton of mana. It's just, uh, it's just weird. It's a weird card. I understand that we'll probably play this more often on our turn because we're giving all of our stuff indestructible, and that's cool. But like I said, the real reason I'm cutting it out, it is, is extremely mana-intensive, and I want to do something else with my mana. Yeah, I mean, just play Blasphem Sect. Uh, it's in the deck. That's right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Obviously, some very spicy artifacts got added. What artifacts did you cut out? This might look weird, but I am cutting out two mana rocks, technically. Uh, but they are expensive mana rocks. So Thran Dynamo, it's four mana for an artifact. You tap for three colorless mana. That's really cool. We are a two color deck. So yes, we will be casting artifacts that are just generic mana. And there will be generic mana symbols and other cards. But if we're drawing this early, it's not going to do as much with just the colorless, colorless mana. Similarly, Hedron Archive, also four mana for for an artifact you can tap for two colorless you can also pay to tap it just draw two cards our commander has card draw stapled on it and we have a lot of other ways to draw cards so hedron archives just that one-time effect and honestly 
both these cards, um, as cool as they are, I just didn't think I needed them in this build anymore. Yeah, I think you're perfectly fine with the amount of ramp that you have in the deck that you don't really need to throw these in. Plus, like you were talking about earlier, with everything you're adding, you're kind of going for that more like, you know, cool ETB possibly with these non-legendary artifacts. So I think these cuts make perfect sense. Oh, yeah. I do see two enchantments getting tossed in the bin here. Yeah, so I didn't actually add any enchantments, but I am taking out enchantments. This first one is Reign of Riches, three and two red for an enchantment that says when it enters, you create two treasure tokens. And then the first spell you cast each turn with mana from a treasure was spent to cast it, you cascade. So it's cool, uh, but we did cut quite a bit of the treasure production from the deck. If you watch the 100, you know, like bootlegger stash is gone. Uh, there's another one that was gone that also made treasure. So treasure is just not very there anymore. And this is the kind of only card that makes treasure at this point. So easy cut here. We're throwing in a lot spicier cards. So we're just we're gonna swap in the curve, you know, big, big uh, mana value cards are getting taken out for the better, bigger mana value cards. Definitely get that. And the other one that I'm taking about is Sunbird's Invocation. It is five in a red. Enchantment says, whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X cards of your library, where X is that spell's mana value, and you may cast a spell with mana value X or less from among cards revealed this way without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. That just says Cascade, basically. Um, and we just don't need that right now. So, Sunburn's Evocation, cool card, just not cool enough in the deck. Yeah, this is a. I, I love Sunbird's Invocation. I think it's a really cool play style. I just, you're spending six mana to cast this. And let's be honest, you're probably not doing anything else that turn. So might as well just use that six mana elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we can use it on throwing in a really cool Ward of Bones. So exactly. All right, you added two lands. I'm assuming you got rid of two. Yep, quick swap. Two lands went in, two lands go out. It is a bigger budget now, so we don't need these, which is, I thought these were weird to include in a two-color deck anyways, but Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, they do the exact same thing. You can tap and sacrifice them, go and search your library for a basic land and put it onto the battlefield, tapped, and then shuffle. Uh, we're a gruel deck. If you're not hitting like your other color, you've got your own issues to worry about. <laughs> um yeah. i don't know why both of these are included so they're they're leaving i would rather just draw a different land than draw one of these it's just slow um so yeah easy swap i mean i agree plus they come in tapped who wants that not me not you not me not us nope but anyways uh with all that being said hunter uh you were given 300 dollars for this upgrade what is your budget at for the deck yeah, so at the time of recording, I did go over just a little bit, which is surprising because I don't normally do that, but I'm at $301.80. Thanks for joining us on the cheater side. We appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, no well, problem. Well, Hunter, I love the additions for this 300, but obviously now that you've had some time to play with the 100, do you have any thoughts on Bellow with all these new cards added to it? I love Bellow. I think it's a lot of fun. Um if you win a game of Commander with Bellow, I don't think you'll probably win the next game because your opponent's going to realize how scary the deck is. Um, you're going to be playing some mean artifacts, mean enchantments, and they're going to be even meaner with the fact that they're going to be hitting people. So, yes, I do love Bellow a lot. I think it's a really fun playstyle. Gruul is all about ramping into the big stuff, and... It's a very interesting take because you're ramping into the big, scary, non-creature permanence. And I think that's really cool. But they do become creatures, so... Bello, thumbs up from me. Yeah, I mean, it's a very fun deck, and it really can catch you off guard because you're just looking at your board, and you're like, oh, he's got no creatures. Why am I going to swing at him? And then it's your turn. And then you have way more creatures than I originally thought. <laughs> exactly. And it's scary. But with that being said, I think that's going to do it for us. That's going to be Hunter's $300 upgrade to the animated army. If you guys like what you saw, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Go ahead and like and subscribe while you're down there. 
Let Hunter know what you would have added into his $300 upgrade. Let him know what he took out that you're not that happy about. We love reading your comments. We always go through them. We appreciate you guys every single day. Also on the screen right now, you'll see all of our beautiful Patreons. If you guys want to see what they're seeing, go ahead, look at the description down below. You'll see a link to our Patreon. If you guys want to contribute more, we always appreciate that. Also on Patreon, you'll find our backup game and backup commander upgrades to all of the decks. As well as in the description, you'll find all of our links to all of our social media. It is at Guys That Magic for X, TikTok, and Instagram. And until the next video, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.